to kickstart it, Bob, do you, do you think we are more informed or just overwhelmed with the amount of news coverage in today's environment? We're overwhelmed. There's no question. And that's really what uh, I wrote this book about. Uh, we have access, do you all hear me? Yeah. Is it, we have access to more information than any human beings who've ever lived on the earth at any one time. But are we wiser or are we simply overwhelmed with so much information we can't process it? And right now, my answer is we're overwhelmed. There's just too much. No one could possibly process the amount of information we're getting. Uh, what the book is about is the impact that this revolution in communications technology is having on our culture. And in no two places is having more of an impact than on our politics and the way we get our news. And there's both good news and bad news here. But right now, one of the main things we're all trying to do, and it, those of us in the industry are you know, sometimes it's dismayed and, and, and there's many questions of those of you who are news consumers, and that is how do we separate the fact from fiction and what is now somewhere in between. Uh, Walt Mossberg, uh, many of you may know him, the technology columnist, uh, he once said when you're in the middle of something, you don't really understand it, and we are right in the middle of this now. and. I believe and argue in the book that the change in communications technology is having as great an impact on our culture as the invention of the printing press had on the people of that day. You know, we all, re we all talk about the good things that happened after the invention of the printing press, and certainly uh, it, it was for the most part good. I mean, literacy all across Europe improved. Uh, we had the Reformation, the Counter-Reformation. But we sometimes forget we also had 30 years of religious wars before Europe somehow reached some sort of equilibrium. Well, we're nowhere near reaching equilibrium. In, in the long view, we will be strengthened in our culture by the changes in communication technology. But I have to say, it's going to be a bumpy ride till we get there. And we're still, I would think, in kind of the first trimester of what we're going through right now. Bob, what do you think of Politico, Axios, Fred Bott, Breitbart, and The Root, just to name a few, of well, the new type of emerging journalism? You know, it used to be that the Washington Post, for those of us who lived in Washington, was the go-to place to get information uh, on politics. Uh, the Post is still very, very good, but now we're seeing Politico, uh, which is started on the web. Uh, it's actually one of the older organizations in this communication revolution that's coming along now. Axios is, is uh, two people who are Politico who didn't quite like the way things were going. They formed Axios. These, these organizations are legitimate news organizations. And by that, I mean they still do it the way those of us in the mainstream media were brought up to do it. And that is, number one, you don't print or broadcast something until you check it out, until you are convinced that it's true. Uh, if it's not, <laughs> you don't report it. Well, we're in an age now where 60, when I started this book about a year and a half ago, 62% of the people uh, we're getting some of their news off uh, social media and Facebook. I think that's now up to 67%. Okay, Facebook is a great place to keep up with your neighbors. It's a great place uh, to get news, and you get it instantly. But everything you read on Facebook has not gone through the same vetting process that those of us in the mainstream media go through before we publish anything. And so... There has to be a lot of buyer beware here for news consumers now. Uh, understand where the news is coming from, and just because it's shown up on your phone doesn't necessarily uh, mean that it's true. I mean, for example, after this awful thing that happened in uh, Las Vegas, uh, I, I was looking at my phone. I, I was not in the office. It, I, it shows up that the shooter who... It turned out was misidentified at that point, but that the shooter had recently converted to Islam. 
Well, this was made up totally out of whole cloth. There was nothing true about it, but there it is. It's popped up on the web. And I actually called CBS, and I said, is this right? Is this guy recently converted to Islam? And they said, no, there's, it's, it's uh, totally, we've already checked it out. It's absolutely untrue. Nobody in a position of authority says that's right. But that's just an example of how this stuff gets out there. And once it's out there, it's very, very difficult to take it down. Uh, I say, for example, uh, Barack Obama is not a U.S. citizen because he wasn't born in the United States. Now, how many times do you have to fact check that uh, to get it out of the lore? You will find every poll shows there's still a certain percentage of people who believe that Barack Obama is not a U.S. Uh, citizen. So that's just an example. Once it gets out there, it's out there. And because it can go around the world and back in a matter of seconds, that's what makes it all the more difficult and all the more dangerous.